Hey guys, Jordy here from Premiere Basics, and do you get that feeling where you just kind of like want to quit Premiere because the whole program just seems to be against you? Nothing seems to work, glitches that are just not explainable at all. And so you think by yourself, is it time to quit Premiere and just start looking for something else? But then you think by yourself, well, Premiere also has its good sides, right? It can do a lot, it can do so much stuff. It's a huge package with everything in it that I need as a professional video editor. So I thought by myself, Jordy, I don't want to change the name of this channel. I want to continue as Premiere Basics. So let's try and fix some of these issues that Premiere is having and share them with the community so that you also don't have to quit Premiere just yet. All right, so did you ever find yourself trying to zoom in on your keyframes when suddenly Premiere decides that you can't? Well, yeah, I've been there. But Jordy, how can I zoom in on my keyframes then? Well, simple. Head over to the effects controls panel and expand the options menu. At the end of the list, you'll see an option called pin to clip, which is enabled by default. Disable it and as you can see, you can now zoom in and adjust the keyframes better. Now for some reason, this option gets toggled out of nowhere. Maybe you have an idea why, then let me know in the comments down below. But anyways, let me show you guys a trick to make toggling that option on and off easier. Head over to the edit tab and click on keyboard shortcuts because you can find the pin to clip property in here and you can set a shortcut for that. So now when that happens again, you can simply press your key and that will fix the issue. The next thing that annoys the crap out of me is when my program monitor just goes black out of nowhere and it doesn't even play my video. As you can see, my play hat is moving over my video, but it looks like there's nothing playing. Now what might help is swapping between the current playback resolution and another one. Once your video is visible again, you can change the playback resolution back to what you had. Oftentimes this fixes the problem. If it doesn't, try resetting your workspace. Navigate to the window menu and select workspaces, then click on reset workspace. And as you can see, I also have a shortcut for that on my numpad, which increases the speed of my workflow. Now, speaking of efficient video editing, we actually have an advanced Premiere Pro course where you can learn tons of tricks to improve your workflow. From advanced shortcuts to pancake video editing, and no, this has nothing to do with pancake, but it's a very efficient way to edit your videos. Besides that, you will also learn about advanced animations, advanced text graphics, and also transform effects. I truly believe that this course will sharpen your skills as a video editor. By the end of the class, you'll be able to have a complete understanding of every editing tool of Adobe Premiere Pro. Thousands of students have already taken the class and the reviews have been amazing. So thank you so much for that, guys. Oh, and by the way, if you're stuck with anything during this course, you can always use a discussion forum where I will be answering your questions or just help out where you're stuck at. So it's much more than just a course. It's a way to get in touch with me to help you out or to give you feedback on your videos. Now, if you're new to Skillshare, you can get your first month completely for free by signing up using the link in the description down below. Go check it out right there, guys. Sign up for Skillshare. And now let's fix some more problems in Premiere. So your video is finally done exporting and now you see that the color grade looks a bit different from Premiere's program monitor. That's because every media player like YouTube, VLC or even a DVD player uses a different color interpretation. And just like them, Premiere has its own player, the program monitor. And if you want to read a full article about this, you can find the link in the description. Now, it bugs me that what I see in Premiere is not the same as my export. So here's a fix. Navigate to the edit menu, then select preferences and click on general. Find the display color management option and and enable it. This will make your monitor show the video in the correct color profile. Next, download the gamma compensation LUT from the Adobe website. Again, link in the description down below, guys. Now, this LUT can fix the gamma shift that makes your videos look different in Premiere. So once this is downloaded, head over to the export tab on the top and go to effect settings. Enable the Lumetri look slash LUT option and now apply the gamma compensation LUT and boom, your video will look the same after it's exported now. All right, the next one is super annoying. You know, some Sometimes when you import an audio clip or just like a video clip into your timeline from here, just doesn't show the audio waveforms. Now, there is actually a very simple fix for that. Hold down Alt and select your audio clip so that you only have the sound selected. Then right click on it and select Render and Replace. This will render the audio and thus forcing Premiere to reload the waveform. There you go, as simple as that. <laughs> now, actually, we shouldn't need a fix for this. It should just work. All right, pay attention because the next fix is gonna save your life. Have you ever tried to nest all your sounds together and found that Premiere just doesn't let you do that? Well, guess what? I did find a way to nest all of your audio clips together. First of all, click on the new item button and create a new adjustment layer. Then drag that on top of the audio clips. Now select everything, right click on it and select nest. Then delete everything else, what's left in your timeline. Find the nested sequence in your project window and bring it into the timeline. Now do make sure that this little button right here is active, otherwise it will not be imported as a nested sequence. Then Simply delete
delete the video track from the nested sequence and there you go, you have a clean timeline. All of your audio files are within that nested sequence. All right guys, next up, you should definitely stop making these five mistakes in Adobe Premiere Pro. Here's the video where I explain those. And now hit that like button if you learned something new today, which I really appreciate. So thank you so much for doing that. Thank you so much for watching and as always, stay creative.